So, I'm here with Mr. Sean Kleeman. He's a uh, good friend of mine and he's my personal finance uh, consultant. And I actually wanted to ask him a few questions. So, um, do you think do you think math is important in the business industry, in the business world? Well, I think um, math is everything in the business world. I mean, it, everything hinges on be it accounting, be it finances, be it, you know, uh, debits and credits as, as you get into a, those accounting type levels but um, without math we wouldn't be able to, to figure out if you made money lost money if you're being efficient in the products that you're using or in efficient in the time that you're investing into the into the business itself and so you know math is so important um, to and it not necessarily got to be uh, advanced algebra or you know or calculus at times sometimes it's as, as simple as am i spending more money than i'm making mm. and that's so important where a lot of people don't know that in the business industry they're they're too busy looking at the the micromanagement of their company and not looking at um the overall picture of what they're trying to accomplish and so math is very important okay okay cool um how do, you, how do you use math? What exactly do you do as a financial consultant? Um, I, what I basically do with a, as a financial consultant with my clientele is to really help them achieve their goals. And those goals can be very wide ranging from you know, buying a new car maybe to going on a trip with their family to buying a house. And you know, these things can be from a hundred dollar cost to maybe a few million dollars in, in, in expense. Wow. Yeah, it's you know, and and the whole point is, you know, how do we help them achieve it? Well, we have to figure out number one what they want to achieve, what those goals are, and to quantify them in in a number form. And you know, we, we it's great to say I want to buy a house. Yeah. Well, houses can be a hundred thousand dollars, or they can be a few million dollars. When somebody says they want to achieve something, we need to quantify it in a math way for myself, and especially as a financial consultant, is to find out what is their goal. And so if they say, I want to buy a house that is $200,000, then I can help them build a financial plan for that. If they want to buy a car, well, as we all know, and you probably know, your students know, that a car can cost 1000 bucks and it's falling apart, or it could cost a million bucks if they're willing to invest that type of money. Yeah. And so once we quantify what those goals are, myself as a financial consultant can then help people put plans together um, be it in their job, be it in their business that they own, be it in the way that they save their money or invest their money to achieve those individual goals. Okay, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I asked this earlier to a, um, a, a different uh, type of person, but I was just curious to know your answer. What does it mean to operate on a tight budget? Budgets are, are kind of funny. Um, they're for a lot of my clients, budgets are kind of a bad word. Yeah. They're very, they don't like budgets because it constrains them. But to operate on a tight budget to me means one thing, efficiency. You need to be efficient. Um, that means if you make a million dollars and and you buy a million dollars worth of stuff, you weren't very efficient with your money because you have none left. But if you only made one dollar and you only spent 10 cents and you were left with 90 cents afterwards, you were very efficient with your money. And so budgets really kind of set guidelines for you to um, to operate within as a business owner or even as a uh, as an investor or as a as an employee. If you know that you can make X amount of dollars and you don't spend X, yeah, then you have something left over. Or unfortunately, in today's society, we spend X and then we borrow the rest on credit cards or whatnot, and we're very inefficient with our money because of you know, living beyond our means, thinking that we're going to get the next paycheck, thinking that, oh, you know, we like to believe things are guaranteed for us. And, you know, as we've seen with the economy and jobs and whatnot, nothing's guaranteed. Mm -hmm. So if you can be efficient within a tight budget, as you call it, that's being very effective with your money. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I suppose that the answer might not always be to just make more money because you also have to remember to spend wisely if you make that more money well yeah and, and, and like i said earlier if you're making a lot of money doesn't mean you're not spending lots of money i know a lot of that i've got many clients who are wealthy who make very good money yet they have less money saved than some of my clients who don't make a lot of money and that's actually a very common thing because they believe that their next paycheck will be 
big enough to cover any expenses that they may have spent. So, hey, why don't we just spend foolishly? But what if they lose their job? Yeah. What if they get hurt? What if they can't, you know, you, I, I know you're talking to restaurant owners. What if the, the restaurant burns down? What if, uh, if they're a doctor or they're a surgeon and what if they get their hand cut and they can't go into surgery and work anymore? They no, no longer have the ability to make their money. And so because they were inefficient with the way they budgeted and inefficient in the way they saved their money, then now that money is no longer available to them. So, so say that I'm not going to go into the, um, the business world or, I mean, I suppose everyone is in the business world just, you know, to a certain extent, yeah. but say I'm not specifically going to go to college, major in business or even take economics in, in college. Mm -hmm. Um, how would that as a, in my everyday life, how would that benefit me? How would math benefit me to know this kind of this kind of math and how, how would I be able to use it to help stabilize my own finances? Because to be honest with you, I've never took a, a business course. I've never taken an economics course. Um, I'm terrible with my money. <laughs> um, and, and that's why I needed this guy. So, um, well, so how would I do that? Or I, I, The importance of it obviously is, you know, and I like to keep things very simple. As you know, as one of my clients, I try to keep things very simple. I try to make a kind of a pathway for them, excuse me, a pathway for them to to follow so that they can achieve their dreams and goals. But you don't need a financial consultant to realize that knowing some numbers and understanding some of these concepts are very important to protecting your nest egg or your investments or whatever it might be. Simple enough, number one, like I said earlier, if you know how to add and subtract, you know if you're making more money than you're spending. Yeah. Number one, that's simple. If you're spending more than you make, bad news yeah. you're going the wrong way real quick and that's usually caused by credit cards and loans you know your students need to know right away that you need to be on your guard if you start to do these things and that's where a lot of young people get into trouble is because they want the new car fast or they want the new iPod or the iPad or whatever it might be we all love these things but if you don't have the money to pay for them you're borrowing somebody else's money to get them Definitely. and when you do that that other person or bank or business is going to want their money back plus some interest right. because they want to make money off of letting you borrow their money. I think that seems like a, a lot of pitfalls that people uh, don't understand is the concept of interest. Right. The concept of interest, they, they make it sound great because they always, you know, you walk into a store, I've got a client right down the street from here where we're at right now who just was able to get a bank to allow financing in his store so when clients or customers come in to buy something in this case surfboards they come in to buy a new surfboard it's 600 700 800 dollars maybe 1200 dollars for the really nice stand-up paddle boards when they come in and they can't afford to buy it his thing will be to pitch them this financing charge now there's nothing wrong with that as a business owner he needs to sell those boards right so he's going to say hey you can get six months free financing that means you can buy this surfboard today. Let's say it's a $600 board. You can buy it today and not pay any interest for the next six months. And that sounds great because now it gives you six months to pay them back. Right. And so that's great. The problem is, is if you miss your monthly payment of the minimum amount of usually like $20 or something minimum, if you miss it by one minute, all the interest accrues back to the first day you bought it. And the interest rates usually ride somewhere between 20 and 29%. No way. Oh, totally. And so now you've bought a surfboard thinking you spent $600 and by the time you pay it off, if you've messed it up, you're may pay, maybe paying seven, eight, nine hundred dollars for the exact same surfboard. Plus at 20 bucks a month, you're not gonna be putting much of a dent. Right, and that's why they make the minimum so low is that you put, oh, I'll put my 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20, then sixth month comes, oh, I have to pay it off. Oh, I have to come up with five hundred dollars because I've only put twenty bucks a month for five months. Yeah, I don't have five hundred dollars. Yeah. What do I do? And then what they exactly what they want you to do? They want you to not pay it off so that they can charge you interest all the way back to day one on that five hundred dollars. It's all built into the plan. Dude, that's interest dirty. is it, well, you call it dirty. I call it business. Right. And they, they because you're given all the opportunity. You're given all the information up front. Nobody's hiding it from right, you. Right. It's one thing if they change the deal. Right. But the deal is there from the beginning, folks, and you got to check. Same thing with any kind of credit card, any kind of car loan. You need to understand the terms of what you're dealing with before you. That's, um, if I may digress 